Our guest today has many hats, and if there's a nonprofit event in the city of Russellville, chances are you have seen her there. It's Nikki Stone, and she's on the spotlight next. Welcome you into the spotlight presented by Alethus Realty from the beautiful Alethus building in downtown Russellville. If you were in the market to buy or sell your home, give us a call today, 479-968-5668 or cruise on over to RussellvilleLiving.com. My name is Drew Brent and thank you so much for spending a little bit of your afternoon with us. As we mentioned at the very top of the show, Nikki Stone is involved with all sorts of things. The River Valley United Way. You can see her with River Valley Food for Kids, the Rust Bus, Journey Church, or just hanging out. We welcome Nikki Stone into the spotlight today. Nikki, how are you? Doing all right. How, how did you find the time? Uh, I don't know. I, people ask me that all the time, and I'm just like, I would rather spend my time wisely than sit home and watch Netflix all day, every day. So. But some days Netflix is needed though, right? Oh, I mean... 100%, 100%. Self-care is something I'm learning about a yes. lot. So that's I wanted this to be the long game of helping in nonprofit world and all of that kind of thing. But definitely just trying to, trying to spend my time wisely as best as possible. So you are actually, this is what I find fascinating about you too, is that you are so involved in all of these community organizations, and yet you are a Russellville transplant. You're not yeah. from here originally. Yeah. Where did you come from? Originally from Nowata, Oklahoma, a tiny little podunk town. No uh, ponds anywhere <laughs> no, in Literally, that town. no water. Here's the joke. We have no water because still water stole it all. Right. But yes. um, bum. There's the Oklahoma joke. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. Exactly. Um, but yeah, I grew up there. Um, I went to Pittsburgh State University for five years in Pittsburgh, Kansas, not Pennsylvania. Um, um, home and of the gorillas. Home of the gorillas. Once a gorilla, always a gorilla. Um, <laughs> Something to hang your head on. <laughs> Listen, it's important. It's important. There's there's, there's a home there, you know? The gorillas and the Wonder Boys <clears throat> played each other in a bowl game here the last We did, year, and I got to go ago. see it. It was so amazing. I was like, I literally cried whenever the article came out, and it said, like, we were going to get to play each other, because I was like, how cool is it that... My, like two alma maters play each other that never play each other right. so that was really super cool but yeah so then I moved here um in 2018 no 2016 sorry 2016 and uh been here for all, we were just talking about that almost five years at the end of this month um I got my master's degree at tech that's what brought me here um I got a graduate assistantship in the college student personnel department and was basically paid to get my master's degree. So you can't really say no to that. Right. So what was the plan? Um, so the plan was to work for universities. Um, and whenever I moved here, I, you know, college student personnel is literally a degree about colleges. Like it covers everything outside of the classroom, you know. And so I was going to, I did an internship in um, international affairs and things like that. Went and lived for six weeks in uh, Quito, Ecuador, working for a university down there. And uh, the plan was to just literally hop from city to city to city every two to three years, um, just living life and seeing the world and getting all of the experiences that you possibly could. And then I met people like you and decided and then, to stay around for some reason. <laughs> now, that's a sentence I don't hear often. You're like, hey, we met a guy like you and decided to stay. Right, right. right. I figured I would try and toss in a compliment well, throughout this. I appreciate this, that. You know? Yeah, just throw something my yeah. way here. Uh, but the but the story is true that yeah. you met met folks from from Journey, from Journey Church and yeah. that kind of revolutionized everything, yeah. didn't it? Totally wild. Like I was not a believer in Jesus before I came here, um, and walked into uh, Bridge, their young adult ministry, and I thought, well, I'll try this. I usually sleep through most things, and <laughs> we'll see if this works. Maybe it'll be a nice like midweek reprieve or something like that. And and uh, then they invited me to that weekend Sunday service. And 
uh, I saw Nathan and Amanda George like six times throughout an art walk. And every time I would see them, they'd be like, you're coming to service on Sunday. You're coming to service. And every time I would lie <laughs> and say yes. And then <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> finally, like the fifth or sixth time I was like, okay, I got to be honest. Like I was definitely lying, but now I feel obligated to come because <laughs> I've lied so many times. So I guess I'm going to come to church on Sunday. Like this is weird. And God totally knew what he was doing because I'm a big 80s rock fan like hair bands all of that kind of thing and that the first weekend that I walked in was literally the first weekend of their school of rock series yeah. and so you know they I came played out in that series. That was yeah great. it was it was amazing and it was something that I had never seen a church do before and then they incorporated Jesus into rock music and I was like what is going on like right. I and you and they said you're we're gonna do this for a whole month and I was like how, I've got to stick around for this. Like, I've got to see how you're going to put Jesus and rock and roll into a message for a whole month worth of messages, right. you know? And then I never left. And I found right. Jesus, and he loves me, and that's really cool, too. So. Well, and Nathan George <laughs> has been on this show before. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, the, it's well documented, my relationship with Nathan. We yeah. go back a long time. But, but there are so many stories like yours that say, I was coming here... And I was never going. I was never going to stay here. Yeah. And I've been here now for five years. Yeah. To the people who come to Attack with that same idea in mind, what do you say to them? Hey. Man. Why stay? Yeah. I mean, it's such an incredible community. I mean, we saw it last year when COVID really hit, and you know, between Main Street Russellville and all of the small businesses, they they gathered together and they did the community with the unity highlighted. I mean, that is, that is Russellville. I mean, you, I have never found a place where people love you so much, where you have so many opportunities to be able to do things. It may not be the college atmosphere that some people are looking for, but when it comes down to it, it's a place to really find a living right. and and happiness and joy and peace and all of those things. Um, and the And it's the people. Like, the people are just hands down the best people you can ever ask for, so... We were talking to Nikki Stone. She is involved with pretty much every nonprofit known to man. Definitely three of them. River Valley United Way, River Valley Food for Kids, and also the Rush Bus. We'll be talking with her a little bit more about that in this next segment. But also don't miss her coming up Friday morning on Carve. That's AM 610 and 93.1 FM for the Spotlight. That's 830 just preceded by dial a trade so don't do not miss nikki stone and rashad woods coming up on carve this friday so let's talk about these nonprofits the that non you're doing and, then if, and, and let's start with united way yeah mainly because havana nights is coming up yes so we've got havana nights coming up on september 18th um it's going to be out at meadow on the mountain again um we're really super looking forward to uh that event we got to we had to miss out last year um but that is literally aside from workplace campaigns um that is our biggest fundraiser and the best way to be able to fund all of the nonprofits that partner into United Way. So. All right. So for, for folks like me who maybe have not had the opportunity to go to a van and that's, tell me what to expect. Yeah. Um, it's super fun. It is, we'll have some live music happening, live band. We'll have some really um, incredible food that we'll be serving. Um, we'll also have like some alcohol tickets so you can be able to drink a few drinks with all of your friends and that kind of thing. But it's really just a super fun, uh, kind of party atmosphere, um, all while your money is going to such a great cause. We'll have a silent auction as well, um, with a ton of really good items that you can be able to purchase. And again, all of those proceeds go back into the River Valley. Okay, so. and as we're talking about a really good cause, of course, that cause is United Way. For the mm -hmm. folks who have seen the logo, you've seen the commercials, you've seen Peyton Manning do his thing, <laughs> what does United Way do? 
So United Way partners with um, local organizations. So like our River Valley United Way covers um, Yale, Johnson and Pope counties. Um, and so all of us organizations can be able to apply in and receive grant funding from them to be able to um, fund our organization, fund different projects within that. Um, for Rust Bus, um, that's how I get tied in there. Um, they actually, we write a grant to be able to pay my wage. Um, um, so I was the first person that was hired on at Rust Bus, and that was made possible because of United Way's funding um, and that we've been able to continue that for uh, almost four years now. So, And that's a great segue into what you do for <laughs> Rust Bus because yeah. your story with Rust Bus is, is really quite fascinating, <clears throat> isn't it? It really is. It's such a God thing. I mean, we were talking about Journey Church earlier, and uh, that's how I got to meet uh, Fred Teague is by going to church with him. Um, knew a little bit about Rust Bus, not a ton, um, and basically um, was at a loss for a job and was falling in love with the people here and deciding, man, I really don't want to leave Russellville. I really want to figure out how to be able to stay in this area and um, came to Fred and Pam and was like, man, I need some prayer. I need to, I need a way to be able to stay here. I need a way to be able to pay my current bills and all of that. I was in my last semester at Tech for my master's degree. And lo and, befo lo and behold, they were actually praying for a person to be able to be hired for Rust Bus. So um, a couple of quick meetings later and a, and a little, um, meeting between him and, and the board of directors over at Rust Bus and I was offered a part-time job and then about six months later was um, brought full-time to be able to run the daily operations of Rust Bus. So. You know, I think most people in the area know, well, I say this, every person who has ever been in Russellville has met Fred Teague at least one time. Yeah. That's just the way yeah. that, that <laughs> that's just the way that that works. But Rust Bus is known for um, their work with the homeless folks here mm -hmm. in, in, in town. Give me a bit of a rundown of top to bottom what, what Rust Bus does for people who are homeless. Yeah, um, so our main, I would say our main situation, our main thing that we're able to do is our uh, nine homeless camps that we offer, um, which are basically wooden boxes in the woods it's not great especially right now whenever it's 100 degrees outside because there's no electricity there's no running water to those so whenever it's hot outside it's hot in those but it is a safe and it's a consistent place to be able to lay your head so that you can get out of the survival mode that you've been living in by being homeless and you can think outside you can think past where am I going to be tonight or where am I going to be three nights from now or whatever or trying to figure out how you're going to be able to pay for one night at a motel room because that's all you can be able to think about is like if I can just get some rest tonight then I can figure out tomorrow whenever it gets here and we kind of are able to step in and provide that so that they can take a breath of fresh air we can give them a little bit of hope we can start working with them on life skills on trying to get a job if they don't already have one and start teaching them money management and coping skills you know there's so many people that we encounter that they've jumped from job to job to job because they haven't figured out how to cope with difficult situations so you have a boss we've all had bosses that have frustrated us or yelled at us maybe sometimes not for the right reasons um and you can't just walk out like right. you and I know that because we've probably walked out before and learned that the hard way, but we don't have to talk about my early <laughs> life. We don't have to get into that. No, 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 not at all. Um, but that's where, that's where our life skills director, Nikita Sandifer comes in or Nikita Marshall, sorry. Um, and so she teaches them all of these incredible, um, coping mechanisms to be able to take a step back, breathe, kind of get out of that frustrated mindset and then go back in and have that conversation about how, hey, I really didn't appreciate how you spoke to me earlier and I'd, I'd like to be able to have a, a conversation about that so that you can be able to keep that job and not just walk out and then have a bad mark on your record and, and work history and all that kind of thing, so. I think there's some misnomers too about the homeless population here in town. Um, and we can address it, we can not address it, but we'll, but I'm gonna ask the question anyway. <laughs> Yikes. And if we need to, I'm gonna, I'll add it. <laughs> Um, 
you know, there is a, there is a, there, there seems to be now more conversation than ever before about panhandling. Mm -hmm. There's been some, 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 I guess, legislation passed even within the city of Russellville about how far away, you know, people can be from the street and that sort of thing. Sure. What does the, what is the real picture of homelessness in Russellville actually look like? So I would say that we have a huge working homeless population. Um, and that's what's really incredible. That That's the people that I get to work with every day is the people who are either looking for jobs or have a job and are genuinely doing everything that they're capable of doing to try to make ends meet. They just don't, they don't know enough or they haven't been handed the tools and somebody believe in them long enough to be able to get past the homelessness that they're stuck in. Right. So that's where we come in and we try to give that hope and we try to sit down with them and, and teach them those different things and give them a place to be able to lay their head so that when they don't get that first paycheck, they're not spending $250 in the cheapest room in town so that they can have a, a shower and, you know, basic needs met. We try to meet those basic needs so that they can be able to look forward and save. You know, we had a guy just recently that literally moved out into his own apartment. We were able to connect with RVAC and their, um, I think it was their uh, Fresh Start program. Mm -hmm. And so they were actually able to help him get into a place. We were able to stay connected with him and teach him how to save all of that money and everything he moved out with over three thousand dollars saved that's incredible like you don't you don't get to see that happen with your everyday homeless person but because we were able to spend two or three months with him and really get him involved in um a local recovery program we were able to get him a job and all of that kind of thing we were able to connect him to all of these different resources and then work with him on saving money teaching him all of these skills right. and then get him connected with an organization like RVAC that could be able to help him into a place so that he didn't have to spend his savings on that so now he's able to look forward and hopefully be able to get a car that can be able to get him a little bit more places and things like that or a scooter or you know whatever that looks like for him but and and you know i think too that there's there's we talk about misnomers and misconceptions about the homeless population fred teague was on this show a couple of months back talking about that very thing and 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 i think there's it's it's been stigmatized so much mm -hmm. that okay well homeless people are probably made poor decisions and that's sure. why they're there yeah. um while there are cases of that being 100 percent true it doesn't seem to be the majority of them well and and i would counteract that with when was the last time you or i made a poor decision right you know like yeah we all make poor decisions and that gets us into sticky situations but the difference is you and I have figured out how to connect ourselves. We've been blessed to be able to connect ourselves into this community. So we have people mm -hmm. that we can rely on and that we can fall back oh, on. That my can family's help a us. walking example of that. Yeah. 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 And where a lot of the homeless people, they've relied on maybe not the right people or they have said, screw it. I'm not going to rely on people anymore. I'm going to isolate myself because I've been screwed over so many different times yeah. by these people or whatever. Um, and so now they're kind of stuck in a situation where they have nobody to fall back on. They've burnt all of these bridges with any kind of family because of the small bad decisions that they've made that makes them look worse right. than what they really are. So and and you know there's there's a couple of other uh, you know uh, things that could create homelessness. Mm -hmm. We 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 said poor choice was was one, but really and truly the two big ones seem to be hard times and some form of of mental illness or yeah. or handicap. Yeah. Um, how hard is it to walk the process out with three different types of people? Because I would imagine the approach has to be, I would imagine the approach has to be different. Oh, a hundred percent. We fully believe that there's not a cookie cutter solution for any individual. Everybody comes in with a different background. So I would even say that there's not even a three solid categories. Like there are so many different situations that people are living out and backgrounds that they've been brought up in 
that we have to sit down and we really have to dig into their past. We really have to dig into not just what's what got you into this situation, but what's happened in the last four to five years of your life so that we can be able to figure out because homelessness doesn't just happen by one decision. Sure. It's it's a recurring decision or it's continual bad decisions or or life just happening to you, mm-hmm. you know, that gets you into that situation um, that makes it to where you've burnt all of your bridges, you don't have anybody to rely on or all of the people that, or you finally realize that all of the people that you've been relying on aren't the best um, influence on you. And so you're trying to divert away from all of those people. It's, it's, there, there's a lot of patterns between um, homelessness, unfortunately, and, and I'm not making the comparison that they're the same type of people, but there's comparisons to the cyclical nature of homelessness and recidivism in that when, when people finally find a way out of homelessness, if you're in the same pattern of behavior, then it's going to happen again, Mm -hmm. or you're with the same people, it's going to happen again. And in the same way, people who are released from county jail Mm -hmm. or, or even prison, if they, they go back to the same conditions, if nothing changes, nothing changes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's literally the definition of insanity. If you keep doing the same thing over and over and over again, you're not going to get any different solution you know and so that's you know we we try to step in and and that's where you know we try to talk to people and and say hey you know yeah this homeless camp isn't the best and it doesn't it's not pretty (laughs) it's not great but it's a safe and it's a consistent place that you can be able to lay your head down so that you can then invest in yourself and you can allow us to invest in you so that you can be able to learn the skills and the ways to not keep making the same decisions and you you know hopefully we can open their eyes up to a community and people that are good influences because a lot of these people they've just been they've just been rolled over and over and over and they feel like well there's nothing there's nothing good out there there's nobody good out there and i'm just I'm just going to do my thing and it's going to be all on me or it's going to be all on me and my wife or whatever. Great cynicism. Yeah. 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 Great cynicism. Uh, But before we move on to the next thing, when, um, when, when Fred was on here last time and I've heard him say this a thousand times and I want to hear your thoughts on it. One of the key points of what Rust Bus does is to build value into people. Oh, a hundred percent. It's not just providing the needs. It's, really sort of rebuilding the value that maybe they thought they had lost. Yeah. How do you do it? Man, you just be there. You just be present. I mean, I don't know how many times we've sat down with people and they're like, why do you care? Like, why are, why are you listening to me? Or they'll try to hurry through stories because, because they don't think that they matter. They've, they've degraded themselves so much or they've allowed, they've listened to other people degrade them to where they don't think that they matter. And, and that's what it comes down to. I mean, we can, we can supply all of the basic needs that we can. You can throw money at situations all you want, but that's not that's not bringing hope to the homeless and 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 you have to sit down you have to listen to their story you have to hear them out and you have to make sure that they understand that they're loved they're cared for that they're part of the rust bus family now right. i mean that's when we say that I, I tell people all the time i'm like we tell you that you're you're part of our family and we really mean that whether you want to be or not you right. know whether you, you believe it right, right yeah and hopefully by the time you move out of our program you do believe that you do believe that we genuinely love you we genuinely care about you and and we want to see the best for you so we are talking to nikki stone she is a community leader here in russellville serving nonprofits across the board river valley food for kids is the one that we're going to talk about next but don't miss even more with nikki stone coming up on karv this friday morning that's am 610 93.1 fm at 8 30 And that's right before Dollar Trade. So don't miss that. Nikki Stone and Rashad Woods makes his return to the spotlight. We'll be hearing from him on Friday morning as well. Hey, listen, if you're in the market to buy or sell your home, give us a call today, 479-968-5668, or cruise on over to RussellvilleLiving.com. The market is hot. It is time to buy or sell. Whichever you decide to do, our agents can help you. So give us a call today, 479-968-5668, or RussellvilleLiving.com. Uh, your final hat that we will discuss, <laughs> it's not your last hat, no. but 
<laughs> by any stretch, but it's it's the it's the last one we'll we'll get to speak with it at, at any length is River Valley Food for Kids. Yeah. And obviously one that is very near and dear to my heart. I've been involved with that organization for the last few years and in, in having some form of you know, help with food stock or, or, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, just let's talk a little bit about the River Valley Food for Kids, the summer program. Josh Dunbar was here a few weeks ago talking about that. Where are we currently? We are actually, gosh, so close to the end of the summer program, which is totally wild because I feel like we were just talking about in our board meetings getting geared up for the summer program. Right. Um, and so we're, we're nearing the end. We're starting to ramp up for the school year, um, and figuring out what that's going to look like, figuring out, you know, we made, we made a lot of changes last year and, you know, added some extra distributions to be able to, um, compensate for the people who were maybe doing like option B or C with the schools and not actually attending in person. Um, and so we wanted to make sure that those kids weren't missing out and we wanted to make sure that, you know, every Everybody that needed a backpack was getting a backpack and was getting that food to be able to to supplement what they had at home and that kind of thing. So now we're trying to figure out what that's going to look like for this semester, talking with all of the school counselors and the school districts and everything, figuring out what we're going to do. <laughs> the the I know that there were some changes, obviously, that had to be made because of, of COVID-19, mm -hmm. um, safety protocols, that yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. Um, are those still in place for RVF4K? I would assume that they would be at this point. Yes. So right now, um, it's more if you're having um, contact with clients, we require masks to be on. Um, if you're back bagging food and that kind of thing, it's more on you and your personal preference. Um, we're we're keeping a, a close eye on all of the numbers everything and so obviously you know i could say that today things could change tomorrow things could stay the same for the next two three four five months we may right. never have to go back to the way things you know fingers crossed i would love to never have to go back to the, the way things that were there's um, only so much on netflix i can't go gosh, back right? i oh can't go back I'm part of so many streaming services now, holy right. cow. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're just, we're keeping a close eye and we're trying to make the best decisions that we know how to make um, to be able to keep everyone safe. You know, all of our volunteers, all of our board members, our staff, and all of our clients, of course, you know, those are our priority. We wanna make sure that everybody gets served um, but we do that safely, so. We'll briefly mention food stock in that it has tentatively got a date. Oh, it's for sure got a date. It's got a, okay. it's got a date for October 16th. Woot, um, that's the so, one I've got on my calendar. Yes, so that's, that's, <laughs> that's good. good, that's good. Um, and so we're really super excited about that. Um, we're gonna obviously be- Obviously watching protocol though. Yes, obviously watching protocol, um, keeping an eye on that. We may be uh, having to make some changes, but we'll be sure to, to keep keep that um, everybody in the loop with that and, and everything. But hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll be able to have a fully live event downtown at the depot. Um, we have officially booked to France, um, which if you have not checked them out, you need to check them out. I was listening to them on Spotify just this past weekend and they are absolutely incredible. And so um, I'm super excited to be able to bring them to Russellville and I'm super pumped to be able to see who else. We're looking at one more main act and then a, a local act and trying to partner with some schools or something like that for an intermission option. But we're planning on bringing out all of the stops, bringing out the vendors, bringing out food trucks, all of that kind of thing to be able to really make it the the music festival that we've always dreamed it would be. And we've tried to make it there. And so every year we look at being bigger and better and more awesome, so. Outstanding. Nikki yeah. Stone, thank you for taking the time out of your insane schedule to come in and talk yeah. with us. And we look forward to speaking with you on Carve on Friday. Cool, sounds good. Thanks for having me. All right, thanks so much. And thank you folks for being here today on the Spotlight. Remember, Spotlight airs on Friday morning with Miss Nikki Stone. Of course, Rashad Woods will join us as well. That's 8.30 at KARV AM 610 and 93.1 FM. Coming up a little bit later this week, Mayor Randy Tankersley from Pottsville, Keith Stokes, his family is the one who takes care of Tusk, the mascot for the University of Arkansas. He has got some great stories, an old Dardanelle boy that I cannot wait to visit with. So we will be visiting with him in the next couple of weeks as well. So stay tuned for that. For now, my name is Drew Brent. Thanks so much for joining us here on The Spotlight. We'll see you right back here tomorrow.